Right now at 10, could the city of Madison reduce the number of alders serving on the Common Council? An update tonight to a committee recommendation. And caught on camera, the life-saving efforts of a Utah state trooper after a man's crashed vehicle became trapped on railroad tracks. Plus, what a tentative deal between GM and auto workers is affecting Janesville residents walking the picket lines in Indiana tonight. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. First tonight, breaking news from our Channel 3000 Alert Center. Several fire departments are on the scene of a house fire in the town of Burke. Dane County dispatchers say the call first came in around 840 on the 3800 block of Sunburst Road. Officials confirmed it was a box level fire, meaning crews from several fire departments have been dispatched to help, but that has been downgraded in the last couple of minutes. No information yet if anyone was hurt or damage estimates. Another breaking story tonight. Madison West High School students tell News 3 now they are planning a walkout this Friday morning in protest after they say a teacher was fired for using a racial slur. Well, students say the staff member is an African American who is using the word to stop the spread of it. According to the Cap Times, West Principal Karen Baran sent an email to parents this afternoon informing them of the incident that occurred last week. Last year, there were five similar incidents where teachers or staff members use racial slurs in front of students. We will continue to follow this story and we'll bring you an update tomorrow when we have more information. The task force on the structure of city government is reconsidering its recommendation to council it decided on last week. Now it is exploring the city's other options for city council. Amy Reed joins us now to explain why they want to look into this more. For the last 20 or 25 years, we've had 20 alders, but this task force is looking at that structure again. The 11 member task force on the structure of city government has been meeting since early last year. After almost 100 meetings and community engagement, the task force originally recommended the mayor's office remain unchanged, but that the number of city council members be reduced. Now, some members of the task force are bringing up more questions, even suggesting we add alders, even as others say, Lowering the number and offering a higher salary will bring positive change to the city. There are some things that suggest that the current size of the council is actually insufficient. Um, and I understand that that might be an, an, a not so popular take on things given our relationship to other cities. Another way to say professionalized council is that you would have an opportunity for folks of color who are lower income to be full-time elected officials, and they would be able to engage with democratic processes and institutions in a way that would benefit their constituents and their neighborhoods in a way that has never, ever happened in the history of Madison, Wisconsin. This would be a big change to how things have run since 1993, and there's a lot more discussion to go, especially if districts have to be redrawn. With these potential major changes, this would have to be brought before voters as a referendum, so I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more on this. Amy, thank you. All right, if there was ever a bad beach day, today was it. This is along Lake Michigan, the western coast of the state of Michigan. Video from South Haven, Michigan, some 65 miles down the coast from Muskegon. Knock you off your feet winds, 10-foot waves, waterlogged streets and parking lots there along the beach. Even the marina there was flooded along with submerged piers and flooded channels as well. Let's get a look at our forecast now with meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana? We also had some very strong wind gusts today, but with the sunshine and pretty comfortable temperatures, this afternoon and evening, it really wasn't too bad outside. We did officially hit a high of 53 degrees in Madison, a little below average, starting the day off in the low 40s, though, uh, with a mostly cloudy sky. We'll fall a little more tonight, just because we do have a partly cloudy sky. Clear sky allows the temperatures to drop just a little more. 44 currently in Madison, 38 towards the Dells. This is just a little cooler than where we were at this time yesterday, but the good news for us right now, our breeze is calming down. Tomorrow we'll have just a light breeze coming in from the north. Plan on another really sunny day. And for your Thursday, we're expecting temperatures to be seasonable yet again. I'll feel a little more comfortable, though, without the wind factored in so much. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead for the rest of the work weekend this weekend in just a few minutes. New surveillance video today of a property damage crime spree last week in Beaver Dam. There were more than a dozen reports of vandalism during the overnight hours of October 11th. 
Among those, several vehicles had their windows shot out and shattered by a BB gun. This video is near the old pick and save building on North Spring Street. Beaver Dam police are hoping to identify the two people on the bicycles. Representatives for General Motors and the United Auto Workers have reached a tentative deal that could end a month long strike that has brought the company's U.S. factories to a standstill. It was hammered out after months of bargaining, but won't bring an immediate end to the strike by the 49,000 workers. They will likely stay on the picket lines for at least two more days as two union committees vote on that deal, after which the members will have to approve. In Fort Wayne, Indiana, dozens of former Janesville GM employees have been commuting to strike since it all started. Most of these employees have a home back here in Wisconsin and an apartment in Indiana. And since the strike started, have said that balance between the two has become increasingly difficult. However, their co-workers who live in Fort Wayne full-time say it's making a difference both here and there. I don't envy them because that drive is horrific. <laughs> um, but they're doing it for their future, for my future, for the future generations of the UAW. Now, very few details of that tentative agreement have been made public, but more could become known after leaders from both GM and the UAW meet tomorrow in Detroit. A so-called Rastafarian church in downtown Madison has been evicted from its location at 555 West Mifflin. Judge Stephen Elke ordered them out based on the landlord's claim that they violated the conditions of their lease. The self-styled church opened in March. The city sent owners Jesse Schwark and Dylan Bangard a cease and desist order in April. They were raided in May but reopened in July, claiming it was their religious right to sell marijuana from the church. Some incredible dash cam video out of Utah tonight. A state trooper, state highway trooper, is being called a hero after saving a man's life after he crashed on the train tracks. This dash cam video shows trooper Ruben Correa running toward a car on the tracks as a commuter train barrels toward it. The driver was apparently unconscious. Correa got the driver out with only seconds to spare. The two men tumbled down the slope as that train ripped through the SUV. No one was hurt, but the incident backed up traffic on Interstate 15 for hours and delayed train service. Madison School District notifying parents about two referendum questions that could be on the ballot in 2020. One is a facilities referendum that would put some $70 million towards renovations at each of the four high schools and a possible new elementary school in the Rimrock Road area to help underserved students. The other part of that referendum, an operating referendum, is for a variety of student programming programs and also to attract and retain high quality teachers. The district is accepting some feedback over the next two months. Governor Tony Evers has ordered U.S. and Wisconsin flags to be flown at half staff this Friday in honor of former state representative Joseph Tregoning. He passed away last Thursday at 78 years old. He had served as the state representative in southwest Wisconsin for 23 years. A funeral service will be held this Saturday in Shulzburg. The governor today also signing a bill that extends health insurance for immediate survivors of police officers and EMS workers killed in the line of duty. The governor said in a statement that ensuring survivors have coverage is the least officials can do for fallen officers and emergency medical workers. The bill requires the state, municipalities and universities to cover premiums for spouses and children of officers who die in the line of duty. Coverage will last until spouses turn 65 and children turn 26. The state will reimburse municipalities for the cost. The Wisconsin Supreme Court has agreed to hear a case to dramatically scale back the ability of governors to change the intent of lawmakers through partial budget vetoes. The leader of the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty who brought the case says the court agreed to take the case, skipping the usual process of working up through the lower courts. The lawsuit seeks to overturn Governor Evers' 78 partial vetoes, arguing he improperly and unlawfully used his broad constitutional powers to create new laws never approved by the legislature. Democratic and Republican House lawmakers voted overwhelmingly today to rebuke President Trump's withdrawal of U.S. troops from northern Syria. The Democratic leaders say the president later had a, quote, meltdown during a meeting on Syria at the White House. CBS News correspondent Mofta Yamam is there with the latest. The House on a bipartisan vote condemned President Trump's decision to pull U.S. troops from the Syrian border. It calls upon the president to urge the uh, uh, the Turks to exercise restraint 
for us to have humanitarian assistance to the, some of the Kurds. Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the resolution also calls for a clear plan on how the U.S. is going to fight ISIS with the Kurds under siege by Turkish forces. Pelosi and other Democratic leaders said they walked out of a briefing with the president after it turned heated. He was insulting. He called her a third-rate politician. Go ahead, Stanley. What we witnessed on the you. part of the yeah. president was a meltdown. The White House said President Trump was measured, factual, and decisive in the meeting. Earlier, the president continued to defend his decision to remove U.S. troops from Syria, saying Russia can defend the Kurds. Turkey and Syria will hopefully work it out between themselves. Hopefully, ISIS will be guarded. One of his closest allies, Senator Lindsey Graham, criticized the president's move, and he fired back. To rely on Russia and Iran to protect us against the rise of ISIS is, quite frankly, insane. Lindsey Graham would like to stay in the Middle East for the next thousand years. I want to get out of the Middle East. President Trump released a letter he sent Turkish President Erdogan just days after ordering the American troop withdrawal. Let's work out a good deal, the letter began, and ended with, don't be a tough guy, don't be a fool. Vice President Mike Pence and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo are scheduled to meet with Erdogan on Thursday in Turkey hoping to secure a ceasefire. Both to Imam, CBS News, the White House. Now the Turkish president says he is reevaluating plans to visit President Trump in Washington next month. Still ahead tonight, a big investment for a little peace and quiet for an east side neighborhood. Plus, Green Cab is going greener, unveiling its new high-tech fleet today. Stay with us. Welcome back. As Wisconsin aims to be carbon neutral by 2050, an area company is making a change to health. Soon, Green Cab will be one of the nation's first taxi companies with an entire fleet of Teslas. Fares for riders won't go up, but by around the end of the year, Green Cab's hybrid Priuses will be replaced by the all-electric 
Tesla Model 3s. It's part of a partnership with the local tech startup Xerology, which aims to accelerate eco-friendly transportation. The announcement today comes with support from Madison's deputy mayor and the lieutenant governor. As my office focuses on the issues and the core principles of equity and of sustainability, and with my responsibility overseeing that work in the newly created Office of Sustainability and Clean Energy, these are the exact type of efforts that we'd love to see, and we hope to continue to see them replicated all across the state of Wisconsin. A green cab will also be building a solar car charging station at its home base. You'll start seeing those Teslas on the road about October 23rd or so. 30 to 40 of them will be rolling out by the end of the year. Living near railroad crossings can be noisy, and that's why east side neighbors say they are thrilled to see the city designate a new area where trains are not required to blow their horns. Corey Street to Wabisa Street is in the process of being upgraded as a quiet zone after neighbors here pushed their alders to find the money. Trains are required to blow their horns at every railroad crossing unless it is a quiet zone, but this new upgrade means they only have to sound their horns in an emergency. Neighbors say the horns constantly wake them up in the middle of the night. I think it's been a neighborhood-wide issue for, for quite a long time, and we're really thankful to the alders to uh, get some of these upgrades happening. I think they're doing some down uh, the next block down as well, which will be wonderful once those go in. So why isn't every railroad crossing a quiet zone? Well, the city says each upgrade costs about a quarter of a million dollars. The city says there are 85 at grade railroad crossings in Madison and 26 of those have the required equipment for a quiet zone. Most have been funded through TIF and general obligation debt. The Canadian Pacific Holiday Train will be making stops again this year in Wisconsin according to its website. It'll stop in 13 Wisconsin cities including Columbus, Watertown, Portage, Wisconsin Dells and Mauston from December 2nd through the 4th. It'll once again be free to go see it while raising funds to help fight hunger in local communities. Meteorologist Dana Fulton joins us now with a look at our forecast. Good news, tomorrow seems really similar to today, minus the wind. Okay, so that's we, good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we get to keep the sunshine, we get to keep the pretty comfortable fall temperatures. We're just getting rid of those wind gusts. And we did have wind gusts today, peak close to 32 in Madison, 31 in Monroe and Janesville. This is a look at the last 24 hours. Those guts coming through very strong this morning and early this afternoon, but we're at least starting to back off this afternoon and this evening. And the good news right now, we're not picking up any wind gusts in southern Wisconsin. All that strong wind has shifted off to the east. Our Doppler track is going to stay quiet overnight, really throughout the state. We're looking at a partly cloudy sky tonight and a dry stretch of days heading into the weekend. Now we were pretty windy because we were sandwiched between these high pressure ridges and low pressure off to the east. As that low pressure travels further east, the pressure gradient's not as tight. So the cloud coverage, the rain pulls away and that wind also dies down. High pressure is going to keep us pretty quiet tomorrow, actually. And as it shifts further east, our breeze is going to calm down, expecting a really light wind tomorrow. Our next chance for showers will steadily approach on Saturday. The good news, though, it comes through pretty quickly Saturday expecting a little tight line of showers with a front and then behind that the shower chance is gone heading into Sunday for tomorrow morning. We start off partly cloudy, a little cool early in the day with temperatures in the mid 30s in the afternoon. We get a mostly sunny sky, another pleasant day, just a little cool outside, a little below average, but we're back in the mid to low 50s for afternoon highs for Friday. Our breeze shifts, so it becomes a little more southern. That's going to help our temperatures climb in the afternoon up closer to 60 degrees. And then for Saturday, that line starts to pass through in the morning and early afternoon. We may see some moments of heavier rainfall, but right now not really looking at much of a severe weather threat for this weekend. Just a little bit more rain coming through on Saturday. A light breeze coming from the northwest for early tomorrow. Again, temperatures in the 30s early in the day. Mid to upper 30s is pretty seasonable. Uh, for Thursday afternoon, we'll be in the mid to low 50s for afternoon highs. And that breeze shifts as we get on the back side of that high pressure, and that means that we're going to be a little warmer for Friday. Still mostly sunny, high temperatures in the upper 50s in the afternoon close to 60 degrees. So a very com comfortable into the week and uh, looking ahead to the weekend. It seems like we'll be just a little above average rather than just a little below, which is what we've seen for most of this week. Overnight will land close to 35. There will be some areas of frost early in the morning, but we're not expecting widespread frost as those temperatures will be the mid to upper 30s for all of the area. Again, our breeze dying down now. It'll be nice and light from the north for tomorrow afternoon. Temperature is very similar to today, mid to low 50s with the sunshine of that light breeze. Still a tad cool outside, but a really nice fall day, especially with that sun mixed on in Thursday looks really good. Good news for Friday. Of course, high school football is going to be great. Temperature wise in the afternoon will be in the low 60s. It will be a little breezy in front of our next system. 
but it should be a really nice afternoon and evening. The cloud coverage builds in late on Friday, heading into Saturday, and that's going to bring our next shower chance for Saturday passing through. Right now, it looks like pretty quickly. This weekend, we stay in the 60s, and then looking ahead to next week, it does seem like our temperatures will fall back yet again with another system sliding in on Monday, bringing scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms and a slight chance for some showers still lingering into Tuesday. A little sunshine there, though, expected for Tuesday and Wednesday. But man, tomorrow mm -hmm. and Friday really look nice. Well, it'd be nice to see that nice golden orb yes. in the sky. And it's not deceptive sunshine mm -hmm. either. It's just nice sunshine. No wind, not too cool outside. Should be a good day. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dana. All right, after that Monday night win, the Packers have a short week as they get ready for the Oakland Raiders Sunday at Lambeau Field. A look ahead, next in sports. The Packers make some roster moves today. They signed wide receiver Ryan Grant, who played in Washington, Indianapolis, and this season Oakland. And tight end Jay Sternberger is coming off injured reserve. Sunday at noon, right here on News 3 Now, the Packers host the Oakland Raiders. Since 1990, the Packers are 7-0 against the Raiders. But Oakland is coming off a win over the Chicago Bears in London. And before that, they beat the Colts in Indianapolis. Packers head coach Matt LaFleur has concerns about playing the Raiders, starting with their head coach, John Gruden. Obviously, Coach Gruden, his accolades kind of speak for themselves. So I think they got a lot of t talented players. They've got really quality coaching. So um, they're coming off a bye. So our, our guys are going to have to get 
mentally and physically ready to go. Bears head coach Matt Nagy says he's cautiously optimistic Mitchell Trubisky will be the starting quarterback against New Orleans. The Bears had last week off. Trubisky had a full practice today. He says he feels close to 100%. Our Prep Media High School Football Game of the Week is a game people have been looking forward to for a long time. Undefeated Wanakee at Undefeated DeForest. We're live on Channel3000.com. Friday night at 7, Wanakee is ranked number one in the state in Division II. DeForest is ranked fourth. The next time you're at the Kohl Center, you can check out some new plaques in the floor honoring some of the greatest Badger athletes of all time. Joe Pavelski, Jolene Anderson, Orlando Tucker, and Jesse Vetter have commemorative plaques in the hallways at the Kohl Center, joining last year's initial class of Jeff Sauer, Jane Albright, Dick Bennett, and Herb Cole. The Badger men's hockey team has its home opener Friday night at the Kohl Center against two-time defending national champion Minnesota Duluth. The Badgers are as highly skilled an offensive team as there is in the country. They scored 14 goals in their first two games of the season last weekend. There's no doubt this is going to be one of the entertaining teams to watch this season. I mean, Cole Caulfield scored hundreds of goals playing Team USA more than any other player in USA hockey history. So he's going to finish. Turcotte's a fifth pick overall. Holloway's going to be a first round pick. We have elite, talented players that can finish and make plays. So we're more polished offensively as far as the finish goes. And, uh, and that's really exciting for us. No baseball tonight. Game four of the American League Championship Series in New York was rained out. The Astros and Yankees will try to play again tomorrow night. The Washington Nationals are awaiting the winner of that ALCS in the World Series starting next Tuesday. And former Cubs manager Joe Madden has a new gig. He's the new manager of the Los Angeles Angels. Madden spent 31 years in that Angels organization as a player, coach, and minor league manager. He's getting a three-year contract worth somewhere between 12 to $15 million. And we'll be right back.
With that high school football season winding down, huge game you've got Friday night. Two undefeated teams, great rivals, only 10 miles apart. And uh, Mike Minnick, the DeForest coach, announced tonight on radio that uh, this is going to be his last season, too. So 20th season at DeForest. And boy, wow. if he could end up with a win against Wanakee in regular season. Ooh. Boy, I think his players will lay it on the line yeah. for him, no doubt. How's the weather looking for Friday? Pretty good. Very good. Mother Nature, thankfully, playing along with football for Friday. Uh, it does look like a really nice day. A little breezy later in the afternoon with our next system approaching. But overall, no rain coming through until Temperatures will be in a really great spot tomorrow. Mostly sunny in the low 50s. Friday, a partly sunny sky with high temperatures in the low 60s. So that is just a little bit above average. We haven't been above average for quite some time. We'll stay in the 60s through the weekend. That is going to come along with a little bit of a rain chance on Saturday, though. Our next rain chance pops up for Monday. And then looking ahead to the following week, those temperatures will start to steadily fall back down. We'll fall back below average. So we'll definitely want to make sure we get a chance to enjoy the 60s while yeah. they're here. Dana, thank you. And thanks for joining us for News for Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.